In this lecture, you'll learn how to configure VLAN trunk ports with the lab demo. So the lab topology now, we've got switch one, switch two, and switch three. And in switch one and switch three, we've got both engineering and sales clients. The engineering PCs are in the 10.10.10.0 slash 24 IP subnet and in the eng VLAN. And the sales PCs are in the 10.10.20.0 slash 24 IP subnet and the sales VLAN. Right now, we're carrying on from the last lab demo. So I've already configured switch one. I've put the engineering PCs and the sales PC into the correct VLAN. I haven't configured the trunk port over to switch two yet. And I haven't configured switch two or switch three at all. So let's have a look at that. So I'll go on to switch one. And if I do a show VLAN brief, you can see that the the correct parts for the PCs are configured to put them into the correct VLAN, but the interface that is going across to the other switch of gig 0 slash 1 is not configured yet. And if I do a show interface gigabit ethernet 0 slash 1 switch port, you can see it's got the default configuration for a modern switch where it is currently an access port and it is in VLAN 1. So I need to configure that to be a trunk port. So I'll go to global configuration. And actually, before I configure the interface, I'm going to want to configure the native VLAN on here. And I don't want to use the default VLAN of one because there's some security issues with that. So I'm going to create a dedicated VLAN to be used as the native VLAN. I'm not going to have any actual production traffic in this VLAN though. So I will create a VLAN. I'll use a number that I'm not using elsewhere in production, 199 for example and you can name it anything you like. I will name this native to give it a descriptive name. Now I'm ready to configure my interface. So I'll go to interface gigabit ethernet zero slash one, and I'll say switch port mode is trunk to configure it as a trunk port. Now, if this was an older switch, it would support both ISL and dot one Q trunking. And ISL is never used anymore. We always want to use dot one Q. So to check that, I'll put in the command switch port mode, so it's a switch port trunk ncap dot one Q. And I'm getting an error message now because this is a newer switch. It only actually supports dot one Q, but it didn't do any harm putting that command in to check. I also need to set the native VLAN. So I'll say switch port trunk native VLAN is 199, changing it from the default of one. And that's everything I need to do on that port. I need to configure the other side as well, also to be a trunk. So that was on switch two, also on interface gig zero slash one. So let's go on to switch two. If I do a show VLAN brief on here, you can see it's a brand new switch. I haven't configured anything on it yet. So I need to configure my VLANs first. So I'll go to global configuration and configure VLAN 10, which was name eng vlan 20 name sales and vlan 199 name native this has to have a consistent configuration with my other switches in the campus then i configure my interface so it was interface gigabit ethernet zero slash one switch port mode trunk to set it as a trunk port. I'm going to use the abbreviated command here. I just say switch mode trunk to save me typing in the whole word of switch port. And it's currently set to trunk encapsulation auto. So I need to change this to switch port trunk ncap dot one q to set it to dot one q trunking first and then i'll try switch port mode trunk 
and it works okay now. So this is an older switch that does support dot one q and ISL. Before I can configure it as a trunk port, I need to say switch port trunk encapsulation dot one q. So that's done. The last thing, don't forget to also set the native VLAN. The trunk won't come up properly if you don't do that. So switch port trunk native VLAN 199. So that's the trunk configured going over to the left to switch one. Another thing I could do here, real world you'd want to do this is put a description on here. So I could say description trunk to switch one. I also need to do the trunk on the right hand side going to switch three. So that's on interface gig zero slash two. And I need to say switch port trunk end cap dot one Q switch port mode trunk and switch port trunk native VLAN 199 okay so that is switch to configured now if i do a show vlan brief i can see that all of my vlans have been configured and if i do a show interface gig zero slash one switch port i can see that rather than being the default of an access port in vlan one this is now a operational mode administrative mode is trunk the operational mode is down right now because the trunk hasn't come up okay let's do a show ip interface brief and i can see that okay gigabit ethernet zero slash one is for some reason administratively down so there's a problem there so let's go to global config again and interface gig slash o slash one and do a no shutdown and that should fix that problem while we're here while we're waiting for our interface to come up properly you see we got an error message from cdp saying that there was a native vlan mismatch discovered on gig zero slash two that's on the interface which is facing switch three it's because we haven't configured switch three with the trunk port and the native vlan 199 yet once we do that that error message will go away okay so let's try the show interface switch port command again for gig zero slash one and now I can see that the operational mode is come up as a trunk. It was down before. So it's a trunk port and the native VLAN is 199. So that is looking good now. Last switch that we need to configure is switch three. So let's go on there. And we need to configure the VLANs again. So I'll go to global configuration, VLAN 10, name eng, VLAN 20 name sales and VLAN 199 name native. So I've created my VLANs. Now I need to configure the trunk port going back to switch two. That was on interface gig zero slash two on switch three. And I will say switch port trunk ncap dot one Q. I get an error message because it's in your switch. That's no problem. Then switch port mode trunk and switch port trunk end cap. So not end cap, switch port trunk native VLAN 199. So that is my trunk port configured. And I see I get um, a message saying that port consistency is restored. Let's just check that this one isn't shut down. So I'll do a show IP interface brief. And gig zero slash two is up, up. That looks good. And I'll do a show interface gig zero slash two switch port. 
and I can see that the operational mode is trunk and it's up, that looks good, and the native VLAN is 199. So I'm trunking all the way end to end across my switches now. The last thing I need to do is configure my access ports for my PCs on switch three. So let's have a look at the topology and see which ports are which so fast zero one and two are for the sales vlan and zero three is for the eng vlan so let's configure that that was on switch three back to global configuration and i'll do interface range so i can configure both of the sales ports at the same time so inter interface range fast zero slash one two two switch port mode access and switch port access vlan 20 was for sales and then interface fast zero slash three again switch port mode access and this one is switch port access vlan 10 for my engineering pc and that's it that's the configuration completed last thing i need to do is check that it actually works and that we've got connectivity let me just do some verification on the switch first so i'll do a show vlan brief and i can see that my vlans are created and the correct ports are in the correct vlans i already ch checked the trunk port going back to switch two so that one looks good so next i'll go on to one of my pcs i'll go on to the eng1 pc I will ping eng2, which is on the same switch. So I don't need my trunks to be working for this. So that's at 10.10.10.11, and that is working okay. Okay, the moment of truth, let's try pinging 10.10.10.12. If we look at the topology diagram again, so I'm pinging from eng1, which is connected to switch 1, over to eng3 at 10.10.10.12, which is on switch three. So we need to have end-to-end -end connectivity now. So let's try the ping, and great, the ping worked. So that is all good. I'll also check that the sales VLAN is working. So I'll go on to sales one. Actually, just before I go on to sales one, let's have a look at the topology diagram again. So sales one is connected to switch three. I'm going to ping across to sales three on switch one. So I need to ping 10.10.20.12. So ping 10.10.20.12, and that's all good as well. Now, if I look back at the topology diagram again, notice that I don't have a router here so I'm not going to be able to ping between my different VLANs, between my different IP subnets. To be able to do that, I would need a router. Just to prove it to you that you know this isn't going to work anyway. So from eng1, if I try to ping a sales PC, let's ping 10.10.20.11, this is going to fail because there's no router there. We're going to have a look in a later lecture in this section about how we do allow for inter-VLAN routing. Okay, see you in the next lecture.